Good morning to everyone. The lecture for the today's topic is regarding median knob. So let's know about median knob. This median knob is also known as laborer's knob, which is having root value C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. This is a diagram of brachial plexus, which is having the lateral cord, medial cord, and the posterior cord. From the lateral cord, a branch is arising that is known as the lateral root of median knob. And from the medial cord, a branch is arising that is known as medial root of median knob. It means it is formed by the branches from the union of lateral and medial cord of the brachial plexus. Right? So these all are the root values C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. It will cross the axilla and it will reach near the arm region. In the arm region, it is lateral to the brachial artery. In the middle of the arm, now this median knob will cross the brachial artery and comes towards the medial aspect of the arm. Then it will reach the cubital fossa, which is the medial most content of the cubital fossa, that is MBBS or MBBR. So the medial most is median knob, then we have the brachial artery, the biceps tendon, and we have the superficial branch of the radial nerve will be there. Then it will leave the cubital fossa by passing through the two head of the pronator teres and it will supply the pronator teres also. Now this nerve will pass deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis and deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis it gives a branch that is known as anterior introsius nerve which supplies to the deep muscles of anterior compartment of the forearm that is flexor pollicis longus, flexor digitorum profundus, only the lateral half because the medial half is supplied by a large nerve. It also supplies to the pronator quadratus and this anterior introsius nerve will also supply to the wrist as well as inferior radio ulnar joint. Now this nerve, the main median nerve, it will pass deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis or we can say between the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus and it will emerge at the lateral border of flexor digitorum superficialis that is near the wrist joint you can see here in the, the diagram but in the forearm it will supply the remaining superficial muscles that is flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus flexor digitorum superficialis now before crossing the, the carpal tunnel or before passing through the carpal tunnel, it gives a cutaneous branch which supplies the skin of the, the thinner area. Then this nerve after passing deep to the flexor retinaculum, it gives a, the branch to the thinner muscles that is abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, opponents pollicis as well as it will supply to the first lumbricals and second lumbricals and it goes and supply to the palmar digital branch that is for the lateral three and a half digits including the nail beds. You can see in the diagram this is known as the median nerve which is crossing the brachial artery and it is coming towards the medial aspect of the arm region. Now this is the diagram of the cubital fossa. And in the cubital fossa, it is the most medial content of the cubital fossa. Even you can see here in the diagram, after crossing the cubital fossa, it is passing through the two head of the pronator teres and it will pass deep to the flexor digitorum superficialis muscles as well as in the uh, forearm area that is uh, before crossing the flexor retinaculum. This median knob is seen lateral to the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis. Now, after passing through the carpal tunnel, it gives a lateral division as well as the medial division. This lateral division subdivides into three proper palmar digital nerve, that is two for the thumb finger and one for the lateral side of index finger and it also gives a muscular branch to the first lumbricals. Then we have the medial division. This medial division further divides into two common palmar digital nerve that is lateral and the medial common palmar digital nerve. This lateral common palmar digital nerves gives a branch to the second lumbricals and 
for the subdivides into two proper digital knob that is for the medial side of the index finger and lateral side of the middle finger then we have the medial common palmar digital knob which also receives a communicating twig from the alnar knob and divides into two pro proper palmar digital knob for the medial and lateral side of the middle and the ring finger respectively and you can see the distribution of the median knob in the hand so finally you can see the branches it is giving muscular branches to the pronator teres flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus and flexor digitorum superficialis or we can say that all the muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm that is superficial muscles is supplied by median nerve except flexor carpi ulnaris which is supplied by ulnar nerve then we have the anterior interosseous nerve which is a branch of the median nerve it supplies the three deep muscles of anterior compartment of the forearm that is to the flexor pollicis longus lateral part of the flexor digitorum profundus and pronator quadratus it also supplies to the thin arm muscles that is flexor pollicis brevis abductor pollicis brevis and opponens pollicis as well as it will also supply to the first and second lumbricals right and also gives a cutaneous branch that is palmar cutaneous branches that is skin of the lateral half of the palm as well as palmar digital branch also supplies to the lateral three and half of the the finger now we have the articular branch to the elbow joint superior radioulnar joint and interosseous nerve which also supplies to the inferior radioulnar joint wrist joint then we have the metacarpophalangeal joints interphalangeal joints also that is supplied by the digital branch of the median nerve then it also gives a vascular branches as well as small communicating branch or communicating to to, to the ulnar nerve also if you see the applied anatomy of the median nerve so there can be a peripheral nerve injuries in the limb which gives rise to the three effect it can be motor effect sensory or tropic changes so motor loss means it can be variable as per the nerve involved and muscles paralyzed sensory again loss of the skin sensation as per the cutaneous branches which gets affected and we have the tropic change so in long standing case the skin area in sensory loss are warmer drier than normal due to absence of sweating that is due to loss of the sympathetic control then injuries of the median nerve can be seen in this four side that is near the elbow joint or we can say supracondylar fracture at mid forearm at wrist and in the carpal tunnel now let's know the injuries of the median nerve at the level of elbow joint or we can say supracondylar fracture of the humerus in such case the forearm is supinated due to paralysis of pronator muscles which is known as pronator teres and pronator quadratus both is supplied by median nerve then inability to flex the interphalangeal joints of the thumb because due to paralysis of flexor pollicis longus which is supplied by median nerve weak flexion of the wrist so whenever you will do a attempt of flexions of the hand your hand is erected due to paralysis of the flexor carpi radialis loss of flexion at the interphalangeal joints of the thumb finger index finger and the middle finger that is due to loss of flexor digitorum superficialis and lateral half of flexor digitorum profundus as well as the paralysis of first and second lumbricals takes place because the lateral half of the flexor digitorum profundus is supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve which is a branch of median nerve and the medial half is supplied by the ulnar nerve so ulnar nerve part that is the the lat medial half it is not getting paralyzed only the lateral half is paralyzed here as well as the two lumbricals now in such case the thumb index finger and the middle finger is straight so whenever you will try to make a fist your thumb index finger and the middle finger will be straight such case is known as known as hand of benediction that you can see here in the diagram the thumb finger the index finger and the middle finger is straight 
Now the next condition is known as aphthalm deformity that is due to paralysis of thinner muscles which is supplied by the median nerve. But the muscles that is known as erector pollicis which is supplied by the deep branch of ulnar nerve it is working that's why the thumb is adapted and laterally rotated in the ape thumb deformity that you can see here in the diagram so there can be sensory loss over the lateral three and a half of the finger including the nail bed also now the condition known as benediction deformity of the hand what happens in such condition so whenever patient tries to make a fist the index and the middle fingers remain straight due to paralysis of both superficial and deep flexor of these fingers okay leading to loss of the flexion at pip and the dip joint and the ring and the little fingers can be kept in flexed position due to intact nerve supply of medial half of flexor digitorum profundus which is by the ulnar nerve now let's know the injuries of median nerve at the mid forearm the injuries of median nerve at mid forearm results in pointing index finger that is due to paralysis of the radial head of flexor digitorum superficialis muscles that continues as the tendon of index finger other signs and symptoms will be same as those which occurs in lesion at distal forearm or we can say near the wrist that we will be seeing in the next slide then we have the pronator syndrome that is due to compression of the median nerve between the two head of pronator teres so whenever we will try to do pronation of the forearm there can be intense pain then the third one is the nerve injury of median nerve at the wrist it means nerve supply to the long flexors and the pronators remains intact here only a thumb deformity is seen that is it due to the loss of the nerve supply to the thinner eminence and the hand of benediction is not present the opposition is lost that is due to paralysis of opponent's pollicis paralysis of first two lumbricals it means slow in making a fist sensory loss depends on involvement of the palmar cutaneous branch no sensory loss if injured within the carpal tunnel as palmar cutaneous branch goes superficial to the carpal tunnel so if palmar cutaneous branch involved here palmar aspect of the lateral three and half finger including their nail beds will be involved long standing case in injuries at this level there can be a tropic change in such case there can be dry scaly skin and and the brittle nails can be also seen so the next clinical aspect related with the median nerve is carpal tunnel syndrome the median nerve is injured in the carpal tunnel due to its compressions and produce a clinical condition called as carpal tunnel syndrome so the carpal tunnel is formed by the anterior concavity of the carpus as well as the flexor retinaculum now this tunnel is tightly packed with the nine long flexor tendons of the finger and the thumb finger that is the four tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum profundus and flexor pollicis longus along with the surrounding synovial sheath and the median nerve that you can see here in the diagram this is the tendon of flexor pollicis longus these all are the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and this is the tendon of flexor digitorum superficialis along with the radial bursa ulnar bursa and this is known as the median nerve what are the cause the cause can be tenosynovitis of the flexor tendons mixed edema that is deficiency of the thyroxine retention of the fluid in pregnancy there can be fracture dislocation of lunate bone and in the osteoarthritis of the wrist joint also and this is seen in the women over the 45 years of age difficulty in fine motor movements as well as involving the thumb and finger can be seen right that can be swimming writing and other examples also we can take so treatment is surgical release so the characteristic clinical features of the carpal tunnel syndromes include the feeling of pain 
numbness, tingling and burning pain are the pins and the needles along the sensory distribution of the median nerve that is in the lateral three and a half of the digits, especially in the night. There is no sensory loss over the thinner eminence because skin over the thinner eminence is supplied by palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve and which passes superficial to the flexor retinaculum. It is not part passing deep to the flexor retinaculum. Then there is a term known as weakness of the thinner muscles also is seen. If thumb deformity may occur, if left untreated, that is due to paralysis, uh, there can be paralysis of the thinner muscles. Then there is a term known as positive tenial signs and phalen signs will be there. Then what is tenial signs that you can see here in the diagram. So whenever you do a percussion over the flexor retinaculum, it will produce us the symptoms related with the median now. Then you can see here in this diagram, this is known as phalanx test. So in phalanx test, flexion of the both wrist against each other for one minute, it will reproduce the, the symptoms related with the median nerve in the carpal tunnels. You can see here in this diagram again, OK sign that is test for anterior interosseous nerve injuries, right? This is normal. You can make O shape or we can say OK sign. And if the muscles is injured, which is supplied by anterior interosseous nerve, you cannot make O shape here. Thank you.